Well, well, we just can't thank you enough for coming on. You know, Roth, this has been a quite a journey for us. We're uh, reviewing all 86 episodes of Say by the Bell, and here we are uh, to your episode, wow. The Fabulous Building Boys. And Roth, you are such a part of this, and we can't thank you enough for joining us to talk about it. My pleasure. So first of all, you know, we, we obviously you've done a lot of things. Your acting career has spanned over uh, over decades. But when it comes to Say by the Bell, of course, the show is huge in 1992. And that's around the time that you're uh, on the show. Can you just talk about how it came about that you were uh, contacted by the Say by the Bell creators to, to be a part of the show? Uh, well, actually, uh, it was the process was much simpler than you can uh, even imagine, about as simple as it gets. I get a call from my agent saying I got an audition. I went there, I auditioned. Uh, <clears throat> they showed me the stuff and I started playing with the script and then I started uh, improvising a little bit and they liked what I was doing improvisationally and it seemed to fit what was, uh, what was going on in their mindset. And the next thing I know, I got a call almost immediately saying that I was booked on the show. There was no sense of a call back or waiting for it. I mean, it happened with it the same day. What was your interaction like with the rest of the cast, uh, the kids, uh, Dennis Haskins, uh, Peter Engel, the uh, executive producer? What was your interaction like uh, with the rest of the cast? Well, you know, there is a, there is a, a certain sort of uh, a vibe or a hum that one gets when one walks on the set of a hit show. Uh, everybody is uh, doing what they do best and the best that they can do it. And so everybody is relaxed. And there's a sense of synergy that goes on that you don't find elsewhere. It shows that friends are struggling or brand new. And uh, so you walk out, everybody is warm and friendly and cooperative and professional. There's a great deal of give and take. And that was what I experienced there. Plus, there was just a lot of kidding around and laughing and good, good positive sense of uh, well-being that went on. Well, your character's name is Mr. Dickerson. He's sort of an eccentric kind of a character. Um, I always felt that it was if the kids were seeing it, you know, were seeing it through their eyes and seeing this character very exaggerated and over the top. And you failed your own stu- you failed your own kid. No one's passed your midterm in three years. Uh, what was kind of the character? What were you kind of trying to get out of him? As a, obviously on the page, that's one thing. But um, I'm sure you kind of, like you said, you played with it. And this guy was just kind of a kind of a crazy teacher, wasn't he? Uh, not in his mind. In his mind, he was a paragon of uh, intellectual and scholastic genius. That he knew exactly what was right and that the rest of them, well, if they didn't get on board, then uh, sorry for them. Uh, I was there to help, but I was there to help my way. Well, with the students not passing his midterm for three years, uh, how do you think Mr. Dickerson kept his job over those years with <laughs> such a high fail rate? And I love your maniacal laugh in the episode. It's just spot on. <laughs> uh, how did he keep his job? He kept his job because he had the world convinced, or at least the people, uh, the powers that be, he had them convinced that he was the right way to go. And it wasn't, it was at his fault that, that they didn't pass those exams. They had the problem. And if they'd li- only listened to him, then none of that would have happened. But, of course, they had to be stubborn teenagers. So, as unfortunately, they just slipped through the cracks. This was a very famous episode of Saved by the Bell. It also features uh, Ed Blatchford as Rod Belding, who comes in as Mr. Belding's brother. And this episode is, is very renowned. It's one that people still talk about to this day between uh, Rod Belding and your character, Mr. Dickerson. What was kind of your uh, basis? Did you know much about Saved by the Bell? Obviously, this is a Saturday morning kind of kids television show. Did you, did you have much knowledge about the show before you came on? Uh, I did not. I was aware of it. Um, the... Um the one time that I did watch it, I happened to be uh, uh, in uh, in a home of a friend who had some youngsters, and they were watching it, and we were talking, they were watching this television, and we were sitting on the other side of the living room chatting about something, uh, and so I got a sense of what was going on, and because I heard somebody getting laughs, we stopped the conversation, and I walked over to the television, we walked over to the television and watched for a while. 
And I saw the quality of the talent of the young people on the show and saw how good their comedy timing was, how good their sense of communication was, how strong they were uh, with their characters. And all of that impressed me a great deal. And I thought, well, there's some quality stuff going on here on a Saturday morning. It's not, they're not just playing it for laughs. Underneath all of this stuff, there is a tone of something that's a little more. Well, Clint kind of mentioned it there. This episode has kind of become a cult classic and a favorite among a Say by the Bell fans. Do you hear about this a lot? Like walking down the street, do people recognize oh, you as Mr. All. Dickerson? I, sometimes, see, I volunteer and, and read in schools and have for the last, I don't know, 12, 15 years with a, pro a program called the Screen Actors Guild's Book Pals program. That's uh, faded away now, but I still volunteer, and everybody who ever did it is still volunteering anyway, with or without the program. And so, um, like, for instance, I was in one of the schools. I read at three different schools every week. And uh, last week I was in a class of fifth graders, and one of them mentioned that I was on... Um, the show, and another one was uh, that I was uh, that they had seen me on a, an episode of Full House. So obviously they were they're seeing these in reruns, and uh, I had no idea that the show was being rerun until every once in a while I get a residual check in the mail. I go, oh right, of course. Uh, but then I realized that then I started seeing them on uh, Saturday mornings on some of these uh, stations. Uh, that I would not normally have looked at. So I realize now that there's another generation of kids who are being exposed to this show, and they're loving them the same way the kids did the first time around. Well, Rolf, kind of talk about that. I remember you being uh, the mechanic on uh, on Full House, and uh, you've done some oh, great shit. <laughs> oh, I, I just saw that episode the other day, but I also, you know, just from, from Full House, from uh, Seinfeld and, and Family Matters, you've been a part of some really big shows. Can you just talk about kind of your career and, and some of these highlights and uh, some of your memories of, of being on some of these other shows? Well, yeah, I, I, I originally, back in, in the early 70s, I was a regular on the Sunny and Cher show. And we got to do a lot of crazy, nutty things, and we got to improvise a great deal. And there was a tremendous amount of terrific, funny interaction between us uh, that all um, generated real good energy on uh, on the air. The, uh, the shows uh, that I did subsequently, for instance, I was on, let's see, I did night, I, I was a recurring character on Night Court. I did about 10 or 12 of those in a row. And that was an absolute joy. Again, working with Stone Cold professionals who really knew their stuff and were relaxed and full and having a great time, really enjoying what they were doing. Um, I did a couple of shows called Charge and Charles. Uh, Charles and Charge. Yeah. And uh, again, same kind of experience. Uh, Seinfeld was a joy. It's another one of those you walk on a hit show and that hum, that vibe that goes on, unmistakable. Uh, the same thing with Cheers. Uh, the same thing with Desperate Housewives. Um, and there were a number of others. Um, uh, there's, there's so many. I, I, it's difficult to, you know, to bring them all. Because I've done over 100 television shows and films and I lost count of how many commercials I've done. So uh, it's been a, a, a great joy ride uh, through all of this stuff. And uh, not the least of it was that I was a single parent. And because I was a steadily working actor, that's how I raised my son. Well, before we let you go, Rolf, we just got to ask you, if you can recreate the rap, the kids turn on Fresh Prince, but instead they see your face and you do a rap for them, if we could get you to recreate that, it, it would just mean the world to us. Do you, do you remember that? Do you remember the rap you did for Saved by the Bell? Well, uh, yeah, sure. You think you're smart, you think you're hip, put your boots away because there's no class rip. <laughs> <laughs> Rolf, that is absolutely amazing. I can't gold, tell you. Gold, pure gold. <laughs> that that part stands out to this day. It's like you just, I, and I just, you're, it's funny because you're in one episode of Saved by the Bell, but people will remember that, like, that you're, and it, did you ever kind of get disappointed that you didn't get asked to come back? Was that ever something that was disappointing? I'm sorry, I, I couldn't understand what you were saying. What did you say? Did you, were you disappointed at all that uh, even though you were in that episode that you were not asked to come back for an, another episode after that? 
You know, I don't remember whether or not I was, because some shows they ask you back, some shows they don't. And the one, I only remember being grateful and happy for the shows that uh, that they asked me back. For the ones I mentioned, uh, Give Me a Break, uh, The Henderson, um, a, a bunch of others where I was... Uh, um, uh, so the shows that I went back and did different characters on the show were the ones that stick out to me the most. The ones that I didn't uh, get asked back to me, it was just a really good opportunity to have some fun, have a job, work with some really nice people, and come away with a pleasant memory. Well, Rolf, you have uh, you know such a such a, such an, a way about you and your acting style, and we always remember you from those great shows. And so glad that you're able to join us to talk about this episode as we continue our journey to talk Saved by the Bell. We can't thank you enough for being a part of it, Rolf. You're the, you're amazing. Thanks for doing the rap. That was great, and we just wish you all the luck going forward, my friend. Thank you so very much. I really had a good time, and it was a pleasure meeting you, even if it was only on the phone. Right. Absolutely. It's an honor, and it was an absolute pleasure. Can't thank you enough. Well, there you have it. Raph Morrow really embracing that role as Mr. Dickerson. He did those famous lines with this. We're going we're gonna to get to that in just a minute uh, where that comes to play in the episode. But, man, great to catch up with Raph. Mr. Dickerson, he remembers it all. <laughs> Just as wonderful as I'd remembered his character being. That was awesome. Absolute rap and raff. That's a new nickname. We're coining it right now. He did it great. I can't believe he redid the lines. And it was just such a pleasure to catch up with him and talk about his character. Again, one of my favorites, Mr. Dickerson. Well,